I remember getting picked up from elementary school and crossing the street into a building I'd been in a number of times already that month. We walked through the atrium full of plants and walked up to a room I hadn't been in. It was the doctor's office. I remember sitting down on a large leather sofa between my parents. I was distracted by all the books on the shelves and the papers thrown around. The doctor found a blank piece of paper and scribbled something on it and held it up. He said, Joe, what word is this? I looked at it for a moment and thought to myself and said, well, that word is elephant. My mom smiled at me, like, clearly, mom, it was elephant. <laughs> the doctor then turned to my parents and said, you may know this already, but Joe's dyslexic. At the time, I didn't know what that meant. Looking back, I can't imagine how my parents felt. Nervous, scared. How was I going to operate in the world? What would my future look like? I face problems every day that most people don't have. To overcome these, I've had to become a good question asker. As an auditory learner, to sit in front of a textbook feels like I'm being put in a straitjacket. My knowledge is being confined to that textbook. To be able to ask questions and engage in dialogue is how I thrive in a learning environment. Beyond that, at a young age, I decided I don't care how embarrassing it is, I'm going to ask how to spell a word, because I'd rather know than later find out I spelt it wrong. But asking questions has been fruitful beyond just spelling and being dyslexic. A good question often leads to new collaboration, and a great question is often the predecessor to a brilliant idea. In 2007, a group of students asked themselves how they could make an impact in our community, and they came up with an idea. Let us fill the floor of the Fargo Dome with non-perishable food items. As a freshman in high school, I was excited about this idea and wanted to get involved. I remember knocking on doors and collecting cans of food, raising dollars from friends and family in order to go to the grocery store and buy more food. My friend's Ford Focus was so loaded with food, we wrecked his suspension. <laughs> As a sophomore in high school, I was able to be a part of the planning committee and quickly realized that our strength as a group of high school students was in our naivete. We were able to ask questions that weren't wrapped up in preconceived notions of how we should do things and how philanthropy should be done. We had a quotation we used to say to embody this idea. It goes like this. Theoretically, it is physically impossible for a bumblebee to fly. Its wings are too small and its body is too big. But the beautiful thing is, the bumblebee doesn't know this, so it flies anyway. After graduating high school, I decided to take a gap year. I was unsure of if I wanted to go to school and what value I would receive from it. I traveled around the world and spent time sitting on beaches and asking myself questions. What would I gain from going to college? What would happen if I didn't go to college, and what would people think? Coming back to the States, I continued having these conversations with friends and family members. They encouraged me to think about it. They saw great value in it. It was a means to an end, and it was a vehicle, and it was the only one available. But I wanted to find another way. I understood the value in going to college in order to get a better job, make lifelong friends, and have a mind-opening experience. But being dyslexic, I saw it as a challenge. I was lucky to meet Victor, who's thinking about similar things. He was asking the question, how might experiential learning be a credible form of higher education? That question led to starting a school. In the fall of 2013, I met with a small group of people in Chicago to be the founding class of what is now called the Experience Institute, a school based on experiential learning around business, design, technology, and social change. Over this last year, I've been able to work in Chicago with artists and makers, to live in LA and work with advertisers and salesmen, and now in Seattle with inventors and architects. This year has allowed me to learn in a way that I thrive. I'm not sitting behind a desk in a straitjacket. I'm in the field, learning from experts and using my hands. I've made lifelong friends. I've worked with people I never could have imagined working with, and I've worked in organizations that most people would say you need a college degree to work there. I hope that these few short stories have provided a glimpse in how asking questions may be beneficial to you. 
There's judgment wrapped up in asking questions. There can be fear. But being dyslexic, I was forced to find another way. And I'm proud to say that I am dyslexic. That hasn't always been the case. At times, it's frustrating, and I wish I wasn't. But I would not be the question asker I am today without being dyslexic. So I leave with you with this, a challenge, to ask more questions. Ask questions of yourself. Why are you doing things, and why do I think this way? Ask questions of the people around you. What are you trying to achieve? What are we achieving together? Ask questions of the places you go and the things that you see. Why do they do it that way? Why don't they do it this way? What would happen if I took a different route? I hope that by asking questions, you're able to find another way. Thank you.